Hello everyone. I wanted to offer some personal ruminations on the left-hand path or dark-hand path aspect um, before I do the next video, uh, interview video in the series with Victoria. I just want to speak to what that entails and means for me personally, the left-hand path, and some things that you may wish to explore on your own as you are finding your own way with a left-hand path or a dark path if you feel drawn to it. So this is just kind of like a 101 video just to clarify so that when we get into further videos we don't have to spend as much time kind of discussing the basics. So the first thing that I want to say about what a left-hand path means for anyone is that it's an extremely slash exceedingly individual path and it's one for which you don't answer to anyone else and you're also not following anyone else's prescription for the way that your path is going to look and how you're going to experience and explore your personal path. So this is why I will reference again and again personal sovereignty because as you claim the authority, the divinity within yourself to follow the path that speaks to your heart, you also hold the ultimate responsibility for how you experience your path, how you choose to act on your path, and the cause and effect of those choices on your personal path. So there's that beautiful, to use that word again, like Victoria and I talked about in the last video in this series, um, balance that comes in here with being a completely self-led path, so there's this beautiful amount of freedom, but there's also the grounding aspect of the personal responsibility that comes along with this too. And being really um, clear that there is a personal responsibility. You know, we don't, we're not just, the, the law of three applies here, so we're not just running around doing whatever we want willy-nilly and feeling like, you know, we have carte blanche to act um, however we want to. So this is important to remember when it comes to the left-hand path. Um, there is an incredible amount of freedom and there's an equal amount of um, importance in how we choose to act and claiming responsibility for ourselves on our path. This can be really empowering, especially if you've dealt with um, wounding or issues around Christianity or religion in your childhood, to be able to claim your own personal responsibility on your path is actually incredibly freeing. And it's the number one thing I think that's drawn me over the years to continuing on my path is knowing that no one else is in charge of what I do. No one else gets to tell me what I can and can't do. And that ultimately, those are my choices to make. And that's been very freeing for me as someone with considerable wounding around religion and Christianity from my childhood. So I would offer that to all of you if you're considering um, following a left-hand path. It's a beautiful path for those of us who identify as different, as unique, those of us who are gifted, those of us who haven't found an expression that speaks to how we experience spirituality and how we connect to the divine and the divine within ourselves as well as the divine that we are wishing and longing to connect with and be reunited with on our spiritual path. So there is uh, the, the beauty of being able to be completely yourself and knowing that that is divine is really, um, really empowering. And it allows us to be fully authentic in who we truly are. And to know that deity or source or whatever we choose to call that, which we connect with on our path, is um, you know cheering us on in understanding ourselves in and allowing ourselves ultimate and free and complete expression of ourselves as well. So this means that our left-hand path or our dark path also evolves as we walk down the path. We don't have to only work with specific deity or um, always do something a certain way. We're allowed to evolve, to grow, to experience freedom on that path. And that's incredibly exciting. And this is why 
we are able to draw from that whole spectrum of deity from light to dark and anywhere in between on that spectrum that we feel called to acknowledge, work with, call into our experience. And this is why you will hear those of us who are sharing about our journeys in this way, like Victoria and myself talk about, um, that there isn't a... Uh, there isn't a formula, and we don't only work with one aspect or face of deity. There's an entire, there's a plethora for us to choose from, and um, deity will connect with us and we with deity at the appropriate time on our path. Pause for a tea. So, this means, again, that we can call in the Magdalene as well as Hades, or we can work with Persephone as well as um, Ariel if you're drawn to work with Archangels. We don't have to do things a certain way and we don't only have to work with dark energy. We have the freedom to call in any of that on our path. Now the other thing I wanted to address in this series that I, I wanted to do, so, you know, just uh, as a standalone video is to also say that many of us who follow darker paths, we are drawn to work with dark deity, the dark face of the goddess and god. Um, it's just something that for someone like myself feels like home, feels nurturing, feels loving, feels embracing and compassionate. To know that I don't have to change an aspect of myself in order to be acceptable to the energy that I am working with as divine um, is, well, there's really no feeling like it. Um, but you don't have to only work with dark deity, and you don't have to dress in dark clothing all the time or look a certain way in order to follow this path. Now, as Victoria and I mentioned in the video from last week as well, um, you also don't have to work with what doesn't feel right for you. So if a tarot deck doesn't feel right for you, if pendulums don't feel right for you, if certain aspects or faces of deity don't feel right for you, you're no less on a left-hand path than for someone that calls in those things and works with those things. And I don't want anyone to feel like they have to be a certain way in order to um, experience the fullness of the expression of the left-hand path. It is self-led. So you get out of it what you put into it. No different than I would say to you if you were asking me about a tarot deck or a specific face of the goddess or god. Um, you get out of it what you put into it. If you don't value the experience, if you don't invest time and energy, if you don't take time to journey to connect with deity or your sacred tools or even aspects of yourself on your path, then you're not going to feel the path as powerfully as if you did give yourself the gift of those things. Um, you know, it's no different than someone who specializes in a specific field. It's because they've invested their time, energy, and resources into that field that they are considered an authority and that people look to that individual to speak to that field or aspect of learning. So the number one thing that I can say to you that's impacted my path the most has been my investment of time and energy in working with the faces of the goddess and god that I feel connected to. The other thing that's really beautiful about that is that you're never alone when you walk this type of path because you don't need a middleman between you and source perspective. Your connection with the divine and with source perspective is intimate and it's immediate. So you're never alone on this path, whether you're surrounded by humans or you have no one around you. This type of path is going to always allow you to feel heard, loved, and seen. And that happens based upon your relationship with whatever you are calling um, source perspective that you're connecting with. So I just want to clarify that as well because I do think that that's important. Um, and 
Again, you don't need anything specific to walk this path. You don't need to look a certain way to walk this path. You don't need to believe a certain thing to walk this path. That's the beauty of this path. So, you know, um, when we talk about decks that we're working with that we really love or faces of deity that we're connecting with that we really love, you don't have to do the same thing in order to have um, the same level or quality of experience as those of us who are sharing about our journey. And I just want to reiterate that for, for anyone who's watching and trying to figure out what this path looks like and if it might be right for you. Uh, and and it's, it is difficult when something is self-guided because it's much easier when someone tells you what to do and what not to do and how to be saved. But then when you are exploring it on your own, there is a learning curve and that can be really scary, but you will find your way with the learning curve. You'll find your rhythm. And, you know, when we choose to look at life through this lens, it's not like we're being punished or that we are punished for wrong, wrong actions. Everything is a learning process and it's about our soul developing and evolving. And we have to have experiences and sometimes fall on our faces and sometimes excel in order to understand um, who we are and what our path is. So there is a beauty to this type of path in that it can and will and does evolve with you. So also don't hold yourself to some kind of rigid standard that doesn't allow for evolution, development, and growth, which is why the beauty of a path like this allows you to call in other deity, other, you know, you get to explore anything in this. You don't have to stick to a prescribed idea or path or plan in order to really be walking your own path. Um, and so I just want to clarify that too in case anyone's wondering about that. Uh, in the next video in the series, I will be interviewing Victoria and asking her to speak more about the deity she works with and um, myth and archetypes that she works with. So don't worry, those things are coming. And this video is more just to clarify a few basic things. And the last thing I want to speak about here in this video is shadow work and that that's an intrinsic part of a left hand path typically. But again, if you don't feel called to add this to your path, that is up to you. Shadow work specifically helps us to identify and work with integrating core wounds and patterns and unhealthy coping mechanisms that we may have developed in order to survive at various points and times on our path. Shadow work helps us to really access the wound that's underneath the perhaps action or reaction we choose to engage in or pattern we choose to engage in repeatedly. It holds us accountable for our actions, but it offers love and compassion in regards to integration instead of um, shame as a supposed um, motivator to changing the pattern or the action or reaction we keep engaging in. So shadow work can be experiential. It can be inquiry. Um, there, and I'm not going to address all those aspects in this video. There's a, there's a plethora and a wealth of information out there online, including on this channel, of tips and um, practices, exercises to get you started on this. But the beauty of shadow work on the left-hand path that I have experienced, and which I am sure that Victoria will speak to in the next video too in this series, is um, that the divine, the face of the divine that you are connecting with, can very lovingly hold your hand through the shadow work process and really allow it to be deeply impactful for you in your life. This is where that ultimate level of empowerment and authenticity comes in because as we are able to release those coping mechanisms, release those patterns, we're fully present to who we are and we are living and embodying a full experience of being a soul in a human body in this life. So shadow work is an intrinsic part of the left-hand path for me and for many others who follow a path like this. And if you are looking at exploring a path like this, I do really want to encourage you to examine shadow work as a possibility. 
and um, to bring it into your life as a regular practice has been very empowering for me. And I do think that shadow work gets bastardized a lot in the New Age and pagan communities at times. Um, it's a very impactful, serious practice that does create deep and lasting change for us. Um, but that does require commitment on our part. But I think anything worth having kind of requires commitment on our part, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah, just wanted to share some thoughts on the dark hand, um, I'm sorry, the dark path, the left hand path. Some kind of basics for you if you're coming to the channel and coming to this series and trying to understand what it is and if it might be a right fit for you. It's a self-led path with personal responsibility and ultimate freedom. Sending you all much love and many blessings. I'll see you in the next video.